Hey everyone, welcome to From the Hangar podcast. You get a bonus episode, so Merry Christmas, Happy New Year. I don't know if we intentionally did this over the past six or seven months, but this chair has become kind of like the host seat. Nathan has been sitting in it for the past, I don't know, eight episodes. Uh, but now he gets to be on the other side. So we Thanks. are going to give him the opportunity to be a guest on this. Um, the reasons will come, oh shoot, the reasons will come shortly. But anyway, I just want to jump in. Nathan, how are you doing? Dude, uh, being on this side of the chair uh, is intimidating. I'm going to say it. When, when you're in control as a host, it's kind of fun. And, and you're feeling oh, this really? now. Uh, you flipped it. Uh, obviously, the episode just before, you were at the mercy of me uh, asking yeah. questions. And now I'm like, yeah. oh, yeah. boy, I have to be I have to be on. Yeah. I feel like I have to sit up straight. Well, it's this is, there's a reason why I like being behind the camera instead of in front of it. So <laughs> we're, we're going to see how this goes. But anyway, I wanted to ask you, you know, how did you come to MAF? Hmm. Yeah. Um, I love answering this question um, because it's actually a little generational. So um, my dad, uh, when he was growing up uh, for five years, so from the age of like seven to about 12, um, he actually lived in Ethiopia. And so mm -hmm. him and my two aunts um, lived in Ethiopia and actually lived in a boarding school because my grandparents were missionaries uh, in uh in the bush, essentially, in, in Ethiopia, um, working with a variety of different things. Um, and in order for my dad and my grandparents even to get to their mission station uh, from Addis Ababa uh, to their to their um, mission station, they had to actually fly on MAF airplanes. No way. And so, um, yeah, so my dad actually grew up uh, flying a handful of times on MAF airplanes or the way that my grandparents would come back and for like summer vacations and things um, would be on, on an MAF airplane. So in 2006, uh, I was born and raised in Boise. And so in 2006, when uh, MAF moved from Redlands, uh, Southern California, all the way up in, uh, to Nampa, my dad was like, I got to go see um, MAF. And, and, um, it was actually the connection that he had really to his, to his parents. My grandpa actually passed away when I was, uh, two months old. Uh, and so I actually never really met him. And so it's a, a really cool connection that mm. um, my dad and my aunts have to my grandpa is through MF because he was actually able to fly on some of these airplanes. So we toured this place, uh, been very familiar with it, went to a Christian school around here, did service projects at this place, uh, washed some of these airplanes, Whoa. all of that. It's been, uh, really deep in, in that world. And, um, handful of years ago, I was leading Young Life, which, uh, is another phenomenal ministry. Uh, and I was leading Young Life with, uh, at the time, yeah, VP. Fly on your yeah, head. I know. Yeah. I felt it, but I didn't, I, well, it's, it, there's this like fear of like yeah. there's a fly do on my these, forehead and I'm do like one of these oh, things. Gosh. There you go. Yeah, there, there you go. go. That feels that flies better. Really, yeah. Dude, it likes it, my hair product or something. Must be pretty nice for it. Yeah, you took a shower. Gosh, do sure I? Sure you did. Do sure I sound did. like a diva? Like oh, my hair product. <laughs> gosh. Um, <laughs> <laughs> so uh, I was leading college young life at the time with uh, uh, the VP of Ministry Advancement, and she came to me and said, "Hey, we have an an opening for an internship." in the marketing department. I think you should apply. You you seem like you would be good at this. And so I applied and uh, didn't get the job, which <laughs> is hilarious. Uh, and just kind of ended up going on and being a barista during my time and just whatever. <laughs> it just, it was a college job. And uh, a few months later, she came back to me and said, hey, we have another marketing internship. I think you should apply. And I looked at her, I was like, Barb, I just didn't get an internship. <laughs> Are we sure about this? And she was like, you should apply. And so, uh, yeah, ended up applying, got an internship and yeah, 2017, uh, started as an intern, and somehow they kept me on for six and a half years now. And Man, that's a long time to be an intern. Well, yeah. It's, uh, <laughs> if Is this like the time where it's like blink twice if you need help, and <laughs> if you're listening, I'm blinking twice? <laughs> no, so you uh, – that's really awesome. Actually, I love the fact that your dad was a, a fellow TCK. Yeah. Yeah, that's pretty yeah, awesome. That's you, dude. That's super cool. Um, you – join MAF as an intern. Mm -hmm. So what was your role as an intern and how did that morph into you being a full-time employee? Oh yeah. Um, so I started as an intern as like a general marketing intern. They just said, we don't know really like what, like we want to make this inter internship around um, the person and not necessarily like a role. And so um, when I came on, I, I've always loved marketing and a Nike ad to me gives me chills and Apple ad is the yes. pinnacle, whatever it is. Yeah. Um, and so I was like, you know what? I, I enjoy social media. I like social media. I'm a 20 some year old college kid. Uh, social media is like a part of my life. And um, so they let me uh, just fully run social media here at MAF and, and uh, start 
the strategy and start the content calendar and all of that and um, just be a part of that process. And so, uh, yeah, I was an intern actually for a year uh, doing social and, and helping out with that. And during my my second half of the year, uh, there was a, one of my teammates who actually ended up uh, moving on from MAF and joining the Peace Corps. And that role got split. Uh, 50% of that role was like asset management, so organization of, of photos and videos and things and social media. The other 50% uh, was videography and photography. <laughs> and if you have been watching this podcast at all, you will know that uh, that role effectively is the two of us. <laughs> <laughs> we uh, we became, uh, essentially, I think what they were saying is that that guy was so good at his job that two people needed to do it. Yeah. Um, oh, yeah. That's, that's what go. I say. There, that's a shout out to Paul O'Brien. Yeah, Paul O'Brien, we're looking at you. Yeah, so. if, if you're watching this podcast, Paul, good to see you. Thanks, <laughs> thanks for joining the Peace Corps so that we could be here. Yeah, um, yeah. <laughs> So yeah, ended up becoming a uh, yeah becoming a full time employee. Uh, applied for that job, and so did social media and 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 asset management, and then have been marketing manager now for, gosh, almost two years. Man. And yeah, yeah, two years coming up, and uh, yeah, ended that's, up that's moving crazy. into yep. creative direction and well, all that kind of stuff. I will say that the the social media presence that MEF has has been incredible mm-hmm. and has grown exponentially under your management. So you've done a phenomenal job. Thanks, man. Um, and it, I mean, it's beneficial that, you know, we had a young 20 something year old college kid, like you yep. said, kind of come in and kind of knew the ropes. It's also kind of the reason why you were voluntold to do the podcast. <laughs> you're the, uh, you're the young, you're, I guess you weren't a kid anymore, but <laughs> no. you're the young spry six foot seven <laughs> inch person that could, that can really run with this podcast really well. So, um, but it's been incredible seeing you, how you have grown, mm-hmm. um, and working under your leadership too, mm-hmm. um, with things like we were talking about the advent, um, earlier this month, you know, you were the one that kind of spearheaded that, um, and kind of took us all under your leadership wing to, to do that. And it's been, you know, it's been really cool. It's mm-hmm. been really cool to see you grow, um, from, that young kid who was running social media to someone who was managing product, uh, managing projects, mm-hmm. um, in a really effective way. So oh, doesn't, thanks, it's, it's a lot of work to handle five, six, seven creatives in a, in a project. <laughs> I can only imagine. So well done. No, you, you guys, um, have made my job so, so easy. And I mean, I, I really appreciate those words. Though. Yeah. Those are, those yeah, are very kind of course. Of words, so. Well, the reason why we're also, putting him in the hot seat here um, is because Nathan actually is moving on from MAF. Um, and while it's incredibly exciting, it's also really sad. We wanted to give you um, the opportunity to sway a little bit in that chair and <laughs> be in, in front of the microphone. So you can't, you can't leave this podcast without being interviewed. So that's why yeah, we're doing this. Not. But why don't you tell us um, just a little bit, if you can, yeah. tell us a little bit what you're, what you're doing, what you're going to move on to. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Um, well, first off, it has been um, an absolute blessing um, to be here for six and a half years um, mm-hmm. and to just have the ability to, um, yeah, have the connection with uh, my grandpa, who I, I really didn't meet, but but I knew he did um, just unbelievable work um, and all around the world. And then also just to be able to, um, yeah, work alongside you and, and Colin, who's behind the camera and um, mm-hmm. some, some really great people uh, that, yeah, you got to see some of them, uh, on the last episode and, and, um, yeah, it's just been an absolute blessing. So, uh, it's an, an incredibly bittersweet moment, mm. um, to be, yeah, even just handing off this podcast because this was um, such a joy. Um, but yeah, I'm actually moving over, um, to a marketing agency Um the, the agency focuses, um, predominantly on faith-based nonprofits. So I'll be able to, um, uh, move into, uh, the more, uh, out, of office role and, and be able to um, hopefully help some some other nonprofits mm. that um, are doing unbelievable work as well and and grow and learn and as I was sharing with uh, the team as I was telling them that that I was moving on um, I really um, was reiterating like I feel like I grew up here and mm. um, starting here as an intern as a college kid and um, at the time had like been dating my now wife for like maybe a <laughs> year ish and and to go from uh, yeah, just uh, even just the the life of that of of dating to engagement to marriage and um, now being still still bitter that you didn't invite me to your wedding. Well, you uh, I think had just started like maybe two weeks ago, three <laughs> three weeks before, something like that. Um, so I am gonna say that 
I, I do regret it. Um, <laughs> but it's one of those things that I would probably do the same way again. <laughs> <laughs> that's fair fair that's fair um but yeah i just i feel like i've grown up here and so the ability that i'll have to um spread my wings so to speak and um, see what what else is out there and and to but still be in the same um sector uh faith-based nonprofits are um so important mm-hmm. and, and the nonprofit world as a whole i think is um just so important in in the furtherment or furthering of um society and, and making um yeah, Jesus um, known in, in other places, and whether it's in a high school ministry or, or all the way through um, a homeless ministry to uh, isolated places all around the world. Yeah. So I'm, I'm thrilled to be uh, be moving on to that, yeah. but wildly bittersweet. Yeah. No, it's it's really cool to hear you talk about that. Someone once told me that, Lem, it sounds like your job prior to MAF was preparing you for your, for your job hmm. at MAF. And I, I was hearing that when you were talking, hmm. you know that I mean, your time here at MAF was God preparing you hmm. for the next step, but at the same time using you in yeah. an incredibly effective way to help the ministry of MAF be known na- nationwide, worldwide, you know, through the, the skills that you have and the opportunities you had managing social media and managing kind of just our digital presence um, yeah. in that way. So it's really, it's really cool to see you move on and, and kind of see what what God has in store for you, mm-hmm. how God can use you now that you are prepared and trained um, to to lead people, multiple people in, in exciting ways like that. So, yeah. Um, and yeah, like you said, faith-based organizations, like I love that you have a heart for that mm-hmm. um, and that it's kind of, it's a different, it's a different angle that you're going to be doing that. So it's really cool. I think yeah. it's really cool. And Thanks, again, it's a little bittersweet. I mean, you know, even me talking now about it is, like it's a welling up emotions. Mm. Uh, yeah. 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 So, yeah, you have been a really good friend through these these past six and a half years. Mm. Well, I guess for me it's been five because yeah. I've only been here for five. Yeah. But, yeah, it's a friendship has grown and developed uh, mm-hmm. since then between the two of us, and it's been fun to banter um, behind the scenes and off off camera. Yeah. Um, Emphasis on the off camera <laughs> part because. <laughs> Yeah, even just moments uh, before this podcast started. I think uh, if you heard, uh, (laughs) if you heard just like our shenanigans, maybe is the best way to put it. You maybe would not watch this podcast. We uh, we have a lot of fun, and that sounds awful. Like I'm I'm saying that, and I'm like, no, it's not in that way. I promise. But it's just it's uh, we have a lot of fun. Yeah, and um, well, segueing a little bit off that, you know, what are some favorite moments or favorite projects Mm. you've worked on here at MAF? Yeah. Oh man. There's been um, so, so many. Um, when I first started uh, the MAF global world, um, so the U.S. and Canada and, and the U.K. and the whole MAFI umbrella, um, we did actually a, a global marketing campaign called Change the Ending. Mm. And I don't know why they allowed me to design everything for the socials. And, uh, <laughs> and I mean, I'm just this young college kid. And they're like, yeah, go have, go for it. Have fun. Um so, so looking back, that's like one of my favorite um, wow. projects, and, and the design of it, I, I still to this day, I, I, I love. Well, I don't I even know if you've even heard I of know, this. I didn't realize that you were the one that designed that. Yeah, I designed a, just a social presence, so not a, not a whole lot of the other things, but and with a, a wonderful team that helped me with like Photoshop elements sure. and, and things. But still, but yeah, I mean, the that's whole cool. the whole grid. So if you got a, I think it's change the ending dot us. Huh. I want to say it's still alive and still kicking. Um, yeah, that was. <laughs> That was a that was a really fun project that I look back on and I'm like, oh man, that was kind of the early part of of me just really enjoying um, the social media world. And um, we talked about this on the last episode, but the Advent experience was mm. um, phenomenal. Uh, that's a project that I look back on with such um, warm memories. Maybe is the best way to put it of um, just the the excitement that we had in that first mm-hmm. like those first few meetings in January and. Um, yeah, just how we've integrated new people into the process and um, how, yeah, even like during that process, like Colin joined the team yeah. of, of our marketing yeah. team. And, he, and he, all of a sudden he sat down in meetings and was like, wait, what's an Advent <laughs> experience? What are we doing? And, <laughs> what is this? <laughs> but the, just the, the excitement that we all had in, in creating this project. And um, that was one. I mean, I'm looking even at this book that um, I had the, the pleasure of working with Justin on, mm. uh, our graphic designer. And, uh, and it was our... Uh, 75th anniversary book that we put together called serving together that um yeah justin and i worked on on some of those photos and um being able to to source those photos and see what he put together i mean there are 
I am not kidding when I say dozens of projects that I could say uh, were were top tier moments. This podcast is a top moment for me. Oh, that's cool. Um, Good. Yeah, I mean, I could go on and on and on about just yeah. The, and I think the the thing that I just really want to reiterate is that like I did um, none of it on my own. Like I was able to work with so much of um, so much of a team and so much of a of a talented team. Um, that made my job easy where I'm able to yeah sit and be a host on a podcast because we have two incredible videographers that can set up the lights and the cameras. And I mean, I wish that you guys could all see the setup that, that we have. Um, and even just from mics that work really well so that if you're listening to it on Apple, you can hear it in a really great yeah. way. And, um, yeah, I, the, the team has been phenomenal. And, uh, my boss, Tracy and a former boss, Chris, um, have just been so integral and, and allowing me to have these projects that mm. I can now look back on and be like, Oh man, that was phenomenal because they allowed me to do it. So yeah, yeah I'm grateful. Okay. Next question. Same kind of question, okay. but I'm going to, I'm going to hone it in a little bit to just the podcast. You know, there were Great. some, the past year, what were some favorite moments you've had or favorite episodes that you've, you've had hosting this podcast? Oh, you're making me like choose my favorite kid. That's yeah, what that feels yeah. like. like. And there's been two episodes of David Holston on there. So yeah, I know it's like, I don't really know if I have a choice, but you're, but you're moving on from MAF now. So you can, oh, yeah. you don't have to choose that. Yeah, that is true. Sorry. David. Uh, one of my favorite, yeah, sorry, David. Oops. <laughs> uh, one of my favorite actually moments is, a uh, is coming together with a set. Um, we, I was actually working yes. remote, uh, with, uh, my in-laws and was on our team's chat just like figuring out the the rug and the chairs and just seeing like the the table that we found and um that was a that's a really been a really fun moment of this and um yeah going back to episodes i mean i could go highlights on a lot of them i think honestly um episode six uh with uh david talking about the the anniversaries um was just such a cool mm. piece of the puzzle of um, being able to celebrate 50 years in Kalimantan and, and 75 years in ecuador and um just what that signifies within um the global maf world yeah um that's been a really highlight um the destin episode that we did yes uh, yeah, was, of course right um and i'm just gonna peel back the curtain here we did not have that episode <laughs> planned necessarily um he we knew that he was coming in uh for a little bit and uh didn't know if we could necessarily have him on the podcast and uh, we put that episode together i want to say in like an hour and a half by the time that we found out that we were yeah. shooting the episode to the time that we were actually shooting yeah that was that was wild I, if you look back, I'm outing myself here, but if you look back, you will see um, some beads of sweat <laughs> on my forehead because uh, we were frantic <laughs> in setting up that set. Like we were hauling gear and putting tables down and, and yeah. Not I, to mention that it was in the mid afternoon of a hot <sighs> summer day in Idaho. It was, it was 90 something degrees outside. Yeah. And there's no AC in this hangar. There's heaters, which is why we can sit comfortably right now in this hangar. But there's no AC. It was hot. It was so hot. Um, but looking back, that was such a fun episode. And I remember getting home, uh, and my wife looked at me, and she said, wow, you look like you've seen some things. Because my <laughs> hair was frantic. My eyes were just probably gone. And uh, But, man, that was such a fun episode yeah. to do. Oh, and one of the things I loved about that episode is that Dustin interviewed you just as much as oh. you, you interviewed him, and he was asking you some not like hard hitting questions, but questions that were like high level organization, <laughs> and then you know like oh how does how does it work with MAFI and MAFUS and MAF Canada, and you're like oh yeah this and that and talking about it and it's all this confidence, and I'm sitting behind the camera, looking like this huh, okay let's see how he navigates this if you can explain this well. <laughs> And I believe Tracy Worry, who is the director of marketing and the VP of Ministry of Advancement, Aaron Bear, was sitting on the side listening in. And I was thinking to myself, man, Nathan is getting all eyes on him right now. It's pretty great. <laughs> they were they were to the left of me at the time off camera. And I remember answering those questions and thinking, do not look to my left. Do not look to my left. Because if I'm wrong, I can't I I I have to go full send, full, full confidence in this. And I think I mean, they didn't tell me that I did anything. No, wrong, you so. did great. You did great. I was after the end of that i was like well done nathan that well also done. might have been why i was sweating a little bit. <laughs> yeah right thanks, thanks dustin <laughs> so, but yeah dustin those was fun those those episodes are, are really two big highlights um heidi was one that uh with member care that uh, when we were coming up with this podcast and i mentioned this on the episode that um that was a really important one for me i think the hmm. um the aspect of member care that we have to be able to take care of our staff um and, and the fact that that's a whole department um was something that i just really wanted to highlight and really for people that um 
I think I think especially just with the the nature and the, and kind of the climate of the world of of talking about mental health and making sure that people are taken mm. care of um, holistically, um, I just love that that's built into the fabric of of MAF that um, we have resources both in house and and out of house that people can go to when they're experiencing things and and even when they're not experiencing things but they're just going through man, I landed in Africa and it's really different than what I expected it to be and I don't know what to do. Mm. Um, Or I'm at home and uh, my family's going through something and and I need um, some help with that. I just love the fact that that's part of um, the fabric of our our DNA. Yeah. Um, So I really wanted to to highlight that one as well. That's awesome. I love that that one really was really special to you. Yeah. Because I mean, all the things you said, that also resonates with me i think mm-hmm. you know growing up in the mission field too <coughs> Excuse me. um not that i had any me or my family had personal experience with you know um maybe some emotional struggles or anything like mm-hmm. that but i think when i came to maf and, and learned more about member care too that was something that really resonated with me was the fact that you know maf and maf is not the only the only organization that that provides member care right but i think getting kind of a deep dive into what they do was really really cool because yeah yeah, i mean when you're in an isolated area and you don't have you know counselors um that you can just call up and make an appointment you know next week like you have you have a whole department that's dedicated to that you Mm -hmm. know they're they're supplying people for that reason and i think that was really cool to hear so yeah i love that that was something that was special to you too absolutely Absolutely. I mean, I could go down the list. It's like yeah. I could say this episode was my favorite, but um, yeah, I'll, I'll, they're all your favorites. Yeah, yeah it's yeah, like choosing yeah. a favorite child. I yeah, think. sure, sure. It's exactly like that. Yeah. Sorry, Joel. Joel, just, I thought you were a great episode too. Just, just wait till you have actual kids. <laughs> yeah. Dude. Then you will I know mean, that you do have favorites. Oh, no, I'm boy. just kidding. I'm gonna oh. tell your kids that. <laughs> Yikes. <laughs> <laughs> Hopefully Shannon oh, doesn't man. watch this episode. <laughs> <laughs> am I am I already failing as a host? No, no, you're doing a great yeah. job. You're doing a great Ugh. job. Okay, it's more well, fun this way. I don't want to go too much longer. Um, I, this is supposed to be a bonus episode, so we're not gonna. I'm not gonna hold 8, you guys. Eight point five is this eight point five is nine? I don't know. It's yeah. Um, but you know, let's get to know you just before you you move on. You know, like let's let's throw out some questions out there. So, Hit me. favorite music. Oh boy. And, and um, I understand this is a Christian organization and a, a christian podcast but you know don't don't hold back yeah hold back. um i'm i'm a pretty big fan of hip-hop uh if you walk into my cube you will see hip-hop lyrics and so uh i'll give you a top five of okay. my favorite yeah. artists favorite artists uh bon Iver, uh indie okay. alternative sure. uh jungles a little dance pop british guys that i love uh fred again is also a little uh uh house music maybe is a good way to say it. he's a dj producer uh jay-z I love rap music, uh, and Kendrick Lamar is also in that mix. I'm going to give one extra of Marvin Gaye. We're going to go the whole okay. whole gamut. Uh, and if we go into the the Christian world, uh, if I have to go with one Christian artist for the rest of my life, it's going to be Hillsong United. They okay. were pretty uh, pretty integral with my faith in early college days, okay. and so yep. I, they They're just have big. a really, uh, really deep hold on me. Very cool. Yeah. Well, And um, Chris Renzema. Sorry, Chris. I kind of want to ask, like, hip-hop. Like, <sighs> what? Why? okay um, I, that um, that that sounded really demeaning no just, no no i know what you mean more, like yeah um <laughs> i grew up playing basketball and mm-hmm. um from about four years old all the way until i mean i actually still coach basketball uh, and then the middle of the season um but grew up uh playing basketball and basketball and hip-hop go hand in hand and yeah. so you walk into a gym and most people are playing hip-hop in some way shape or form and um yeah i just ended up falling in love with like the ability that they have to tell stories uh in such a um, unique way. Uh, a lot of times the wordplay of, of a hip hop artist is super, super unique. Uh, and they're able to tell stories on multiple different mm. layers. Um, but also the amount of lyrics that they can get into the same <laughs> amount of time of like a, of a, of a rock song sure. or a pop song. Uh, you gotta, you, you have to be really good with the, the pen or I guess the keyboard now these days. And um, it's one of the reasons why yeah. I like some of the older artists a little bit more than sure. the new artists. Yeah. But, you mentioned basketball. Tell us a little bit about that. Yeah. Um, yeah, I've been playing basketball my whole life. I wanted to be like my brother who, uh, is five and a half years older than me. So he was a three point shooter and six one. And I said, I want to be like him. So I became a six, seven, three point shooter, which was great. Uh, played through all throughout high school. It's, it's the worst when you have MAF basketball <laughs> tournaments here at Nampa and you think he's not going to sink those three, three pointers from like two feet behind the three point line. You're like, yeah, sure. Go for it. And he's sinking them left and right. It's, it's the worst. I, I enjoy it. Um, 
<laughs> but yeah, I started playing basketball. And then, uh, after graduating high school, uh, immediately got started in, in coaching. Uh, and so I've been coaching. Yeah. This will be, gosh, I think like my 10th season as a, as a basketball coach and wow, eighth, eighth or ninth season as a, as a head JV basketball coach for, for high school boys. That's so, awesome. It's a great. That's time. cool. It's a great time. Yeah. I'll say that Nathan's coaching abilities played very well into leading teams like the Advent creative team. I felt like, man, I got, I'm getting coach Jones here. It's awesome. <laughs> so yeah. there were a couple of meetings that I wanted to yeah. do that. And, um, I mean, I, I don't get super fired up. I, I get fired up, but not in like a bad way. Uh, but I did never, I, I've thrown a marker one time in my, uh, coaching career and at, at a halftime speech, uh, I didn't get a chance to do that at a, at a meeting. So <laughs> maybe, I mean, maybe in my last meeting, I'll throw yeah. a marker across the room or something. We'll see. Awesome. Okay. <laughs> last question. Yep podcasts what what podcasts are you listening to these days it's actually really ironic i don't listen to many podcasts oh. which is hilarious that i'm a podcast host i know uh huh. colin just gave me a dirty look behind the camera well, i was gonna ask you about books okay but... <laughs> well yeah, don't ask me about books either because i uh <laughs> i, I well, actually did read did read a phenomenal book uh earlier this year <laughs> which is again outing me because you well, started it three years ago though right well no that's uh, that's still halfway done uh <laughs> that was three years ago uh but thirst by scott harrison charity water founder was a phenomenal okay, book yeah yeah. Uh, to get a little bit more about uh, about charity water uh honestly a lot of the podcasts i listen to do have something to do with basketball um and so i'm a big duke basketball fan which maybe just got me a lot of enemies it's hard to tell um but duke has a podcast actually player <laughs> run uh called uh uh oh gosh i'm forgetting i'm blanking on the name but it's a player run podcast one of their players actually hosts oh, it okay. and interviews staff or or um other players that one's phenomenal ryan young's the host shout out ryan uh, and then they also have another one called Duke Blue Planet uh, that I listen to a lot too. That's uh, a little bit more of like a story uh, driven podcast. But I don't listen to a lot of podcasts. Yeah, I'm fun. I'm like cool. a music guy. If you look at my music after the end of the year, it's like hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of hours. And podcasts are like thirty minutes is what it feels like. So. That's fine. That's totally cool. Everyone's yeah. got their own thing. It's, I, I appreciate you asking about podcasts though instead of books because I've talked about yeah. how well, little I read. Yeah. Well, I was going to ask about TV shows too, but I'm like, ooh, that might be. <laughs> uh that survivor be. phenomenal oh, wow love survivor i said it any of survivor fans hit up nathan for you know you can talk his ear off about survivor that was, and he can that follow was a, along that was a COVID edition when we had nothing else to watch <laughs> because sports were done um yeah i mean uh, i'm i'm a really big sports fan and so i'm mm, yeah my wife has been many 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 hours sat by a tv watching the same episode of sports center but i'll i love it i love it it's great <laughs> Even if it's baseball season, I'm not a baseball fan. I can tell you. Okay. Well, with that then, don't have to go into detail, but just list off your favorite pro sports teams. Oh, easy. San Antonio Spurs, top top okay. of the tier. Duke basketball, which isn't pro, but also they're getting paid now, so I love that. Uh, the Detroit Lions, so I clearly hate good football, except for this year. Uh, shout out the Lions. They're doing great. Uh, <laughs> and then uh, if you want the, the big five, uh, we'll go with uh, Tottenham Hotspurs which is the the uh, Premier League team over in England. Uh, we'll go with the uh, Pittsburgh Penguins and the Pittsburgh Pirates. Uh, those are the huh. only two that have, like, regional anything. And then, obviously, Boise State. We're in the country of Boise State. Yeah, so. okay. I was going to say, Together. you're all kind of all over the place except for that Boise State one. But yeah. I guess that kind of goes hand-in-hand hand with growing up in Boise, right? Absolutely. Yeah, yeah. There's, there's no pro yeah. sports teams. And, I mean, people would probably be like, oh, be a Blazers fan or be a Jazz fan. Yeah. But I well, chose the Spurs because shout-out David Robinson. Yeah. Oh, that is great. Man. Come he on. He's great. Can't go wrong with him. Okay. Awesome. Yeah. Well, there you have it. Um, yeah, I just want to say again, like, it's going to be it's gonna be tough not seeing you around the office and not seeing you run the, uh, run the posts hmm. on all the social media platforms that we have. And, and even, like, on this podcast, you have been a really, you have been the face of From the Hangar <laughs> for the past year. And, you know, like, can't, can't have you on forever, but, you know, part of me wishes that you were here to run it a little bit longer hmm. you know but um conversating about with you about what to do moving on from from the hangar and what we're going to do with a host um you me and the other managers and marketing talked about it and yeah you're looking at them yeah so you're going to be seeing me the in the new year that's going to be me hosting the next uh the next episodes of the podcast so with that we're just gonna wrap it up can I jump in? Uh, I'm going to jump in because what are you going to do? Fire me. Um, <laughs> I um, just want to say to to everybody that's watched these mm. episodes, um, to everybody that's liked to post on social media, to commenting, to um, interacting with me in messages or, or whatever else. Um, thank you. 
It's mm-hmm. been um, an absolute joy um, to watch this community grow and to be a part of it and, and to be a part of hopefully your story um, and, and with what the Lord is doing. And um, six and a half years uh, feels um, not long enough uh, mm-hmm. to be a part of um, this world and, and this space. And so um, thanks for your kind words. Uh, it's been an absolute joy to see your uh, encouragement on the podcast or the encouragement on Facebook or Instagram or Twitter or LinkedIn or TikTok or wherever else um, you see it, whether you're downloading our playlist on Spotify or whatever else. um, It's been an absolute joy. Uh, It's also been an absolute joy to work with this team. Um, There have been Mm. so many unbelievable people that have um, come through these doors. Um, Some of them have left, some of them have stayed. um, And that has been um, the reason that I'm here today is because uh, those people are, um, unbelievable and so uh know that you're in great hands with lem as the post uh, i'm thrilled that that you'll be seeing him more uh, as as the we'll podcast see. progresses we'll um but yeah thank you thank you for being a part of my journey uh hopefully you enjoyed me being a part of your journey a little bit as well so love it thanks nathan thank you all right well merry christmas happy new year everybody we'll see you in the new year cheers <laughs> <laughs>